Hi guys, it's Lisa Unger, and I am here with the, my next edition of Three Good Things. And I'm super excited today because I'm here with my wonderful friend, Allison Galen, who also happens to be an extremely talented USA Today and internationally best-selling author and award-winning author. Um, oh, oh, she has won the Seamus, the Edgar, the, um, the Thriller Award. No, what else, nominated. Allison? Yeah, I was just nominated for that. I won the RT. That counts, that counts. Nomin okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Academy Award, no, I'm just kidding. The Academy <laughs> Award, the Pulitzer <laughs> Prize. Exactly. <laughs> Miss America. It's the end of truth. We can say whatever we want and make it. Yeah. <laughs> We're fiction writers. So and speaking yeah. of end of truth, we recently both just contributed to um, this collection for, uh, of short stories called Hush. Yes. Which was, which was originally um, uh, called the end of truth. That's what John, that's how John Santalofer, who was one of the people involved in putting it together, um, that's how he originally conceived of it. And you wrote a brilliant short story for Hush. As did you. It was such, it was such a cool, I loved your story. It was so creepy. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> you write the most wonderful, creepy male character. <laughs> you really did. Um, but uh, yeah, it, um, Jonathan, who was an amazing editor, yeah, um, yeah said it was called uh, The End of Truth when we first got it. And, and what a cool assignment for us who love to write about liars and lies yes. and and it's just such a it's it's a, actually would be a great writing prompt for anything anybody too just like write about somebody lying and I, I, you could probably take almost any crime fiction book on the bestseller list right now and it, it would be about that so it was it was a it's a great it was, it's a broad enough assignment, but it's like specific enough yes. that you can have fun with it, I thought. And it's yeah. amazing how, so it was, it was you, me, uh, Ruth Ware, Laura Lippman, and Oyen Khan Braithwaite, and yes. Jeffrey Beaver, the wonderful and Jeff Jeffrey Beaver. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing how, I, I mean, it can't, so the publisher came to me with the idea, you know, with a series of ideas and I immediately gravitated towards that one, the end of truth. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh yes, that's the one. And, uh, and it's a, and I already kind of, you know, it was immediately already like, I think I already had something going on in my head that I wanted to explore and that kind of just connected with it. But I think what's amazing about the Hush Collection is that every single story is, you know, came from that one spot. Mm -hmm. but they are just in they're so different so different. completely different all yeah. over the place like yeah. you know it's just it's it's so interesting what the end of truth will spark in somebody's mind you know yes. um yeah so yeah and they're all great stories it was really i thought that was just such a fun uh thing to contribute to you know? yeah i i really enjoy it i did one other collection that uh, and i contributed the uh, the sleep type motel it was a it was a um a more of a like a spooky like sort of halloween collection. which was nominated for the edgar it was nominated for an edgar yes yes Nominations count. <laughs> yes, they. Oh my gosh, they definitely do, especially for Edgar's, especially for you, who the same year was nominated for best paper rap original and best um, uh, short story. Like I don't know that I've ever. I, I've been at this a while. I don't know if I've, I've ever seen anybody get nominated in two categories for the Edgar. I've seen it for the Anthony's or whatever, but not it for the. Very, it was very meaningful, and I think I, what one of my funniest memories of that is like when we saw each other before we were both nominated in the same category. And I was like, well, I said, if I'm going to lose, I, I want to lose to you. <laughs> I said the same thing. You said the same thing. Only one of us got our wish. <laughs> <laughs> but you were nominated in two categories at the same time. I mean, it was, that's just like, to me, that's, it's, somebody's it's, gonna win a category every year, but there are no years when somebody's nominated in two categories. So okay. that to me is like, and that's I like honestly do making. feel like, you know, I really did walk into that thinking, wow, I'm just, and it's such a cliche, but it really is true. It's such an honor to even be nominated, you know, to mm -hmm. be among your, you know, to be among your group in that oh, way. Yeah. And, you know, I really just kind of walked into it just very joyful, you know, completely non attached and just grateful to be you know um with my friends and and you know to be nominated with them and just to feel like just very honored in their presence so and 
And was wasn't it fun because our category was all women? And I think was. that was a first too. And yeah. all, I mean, all just, I was so honored to be nominated along with, you know, with all of you guys. It yeah, was, it, it was, was very special. exciting. It was, really, I was really, it was a fun night. It was so great. I it was really it. fun. It so, was and a, that when we had our, we had our lunch that time too. Yes. And that was really good. That was, oh, was great. We need more lunches. Night. Was that the same conference? No, it wasn't. No, no, it was totally, that was a totally different conference. <laughs> our lunch, yeah, that was a voucher con, but it was like, you know, you could be forgiven because you had a few margaritas and, you know, it could have <laughs> been anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's it just like, I always have so much fun with you Lisa so you know they all they, <laughs> they, they kind of blend together especially now that we're all shut in it's like I know you we know, just remember these like super fun you know events that we all had it's like, but I'm glad that we get to connect like this because you know I mean it would be possible for a year to go by without us seeing each other we could like cross paths at different conferences and maybe not be on the same panel or we have time to connect and at least we get to do this so Absolutely. I'm, I'm happy for that. Absolutely. Definitely. And that's part of the reason why I, I did this is just because I wanted to be able to connect with my author pals who I'm just, you know, very, very blessed to be able to see usually everybody that I care about many times a year, even though we don't live in the same place. <laughs> and that's kind of been, you know, kind of been lost to us um, in this, in during the pandemic, but at least we can connect like this and talk about some good stuff we can put some positivity out into the universe and so um this is you know as you know it's called three good things mm -hmm. and um i want to ask you allison is yes. there anything that you have been reading lately that has really just kind of transported you or is there something that you like return to again and again for like for inspiration or comfort or anything like that well, there are a lot of books like that. Um, I'm actually going to, I just want to talk about a book that I read sort of towards the beginning of the pandemic. I think it came out then. Yeah. Um, on my must, on my next, my two TBR pile, by the way, is Confessions on the Seven Foot Five. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And I mean, it, it, I just, I love that type of story. I just okay. love it. Um, yeah. But any, so I can't wait. But um, but what I wanted to talk about is The Butcher's Daughter by Wendy Corsi Staub. Oh, and I had Wendy on. I love that book. She's isn't so, it amazing? It's, it's so, so it's so um, it's the third book in a trilogy. But Wendy does these interesting trilogies um, that in the past she's done things that were they're all like related to a theme or something. This this these are sort of sequels to each other. But you can yeah. read any of the books alone. The first book is Little Girl Lost. The second one is Dead Silence. And the butcher's daughter is the is the third, mm -hmm. and I read all three. You could read it in and of itself, but it's an amazing payoff to read it as the third book. Um, yeah. It's 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 called the Foundlings trilogy, um, and uh, one of the main character Amelia is an expert in genealogy and a foundling herself, like a baby who was just found in a church and right. was raised by this couple, and and she didn't know right away that they weren't her real parents and then she's been on this search and then there's also this fantastic uh NYPD detective Stockton Barnes who's who, who has been in other books of hers in the past but is a main character in this book and a really super scary villain and it's just got everything and it's such yeah. good escapism especially during this time to just kind of get into this this world um that's it, these are very complicated books, but they're so easy to follow because the characters are so real and right. they're exactly. yeah, right. Don't you think they're so? I do. Yeah, I love Wendy. I had her on just as the Butcher's Daughter was coming out, and you know we got a chance to talk about it a little bit. And it's just kind of, it's just kind of my favorite sort of read. You know where you just it's very care. You know, like your books, very character rich, mm -hmm. very like sort of you know um, like a deep dive into themes like identity and what makes us who we are and like you know family and yeah. you know, these powerful relationships and you know she just really is such a such a great writer and I agree that it could you know definitely it's the payoff for the of, of that trilogy for sure but it also is a great a great place to start you know a great place to, it stands alone completely absolutely she she's so good with character and yeah. um, and like and you mentioned family like family is always a very strong theme in her books and yes I read these characters and I just, I feel like they're, they're my part of my family, like that yeah. I know them, you know, like you kind of see them for all their flaws and, 
you know, whatever, but they're, they're just these very three dimensional characters that, and that that's my favorite kind of book to read just where you can, yeah. you know, just get involved, get under the skin. Get involved of in, you know, like a universe, especially when there, you know, there's multiple books and mm-hmm. you get yes. just involved with um, the universe of the story. And then also, you know, how a character might change and evolve over time. Um, you know, I think it's just, you know, it's very, they're very involving. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 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 So is that, so that any, anything else that you've been reading? Um, well, is there something that you like kind of, is there anything that you go back to like as a writer? Is there anything yeah. that you kind of like a touchstone for you in your writing? Yes. And it's interesting because your book has to do with the train and mine is Strangers on a Train. Um, oh, it is. I just love that book so much. Yeah. And um, it's, it's just, I mean, I love the movie too. Um, and I, I saw the movie before I read the book, but I've read the book several times. I, I've read it again and again. That that one and the other one I go back to all the time is Where Are the Children by Mary Higgins Clark. Oh, um, Mary. I, the, yeah. the, the pacing in that book is just so inspirational to me. Yeah. You know, I, I've used it, I've taught classes, in, you know, in writing as, and as you have too. And, and um, I, always, um, I always take out the last, kind of climactic scene from Where Are the Children? And I read it, how she slows down this one moment of a key going into a lock. And it's mm-hmm. this, one of the scariest paragraphs I've ever read and then speeds everything up again. The, the, the pacing is just like tour de force in that yeah. book, I think. Um, so that, and, and, and then Strangers on a Train, just for the psychology between these two men and the, yeah. the obsession and the, you know, and the, and the sort of relentless, again, with the pacing, the relentlessness of it. Yeah. Um, and it's a very tiny, slim book, but I just, I get lost in it. You know, every time I read it, I get lost in it. Um, the uh, Patricia yeah. Highsmith is just such a, she's such a master storyteller. And, you know, the, the, um, the deep dive into psychology of her, of her characters, I mean, you know, the talented Mr. Ripley and, mm-hmm. you know, um, one of my favorites of hers is uh, This this Sweet Sickness. Oh, I have not read that. Oh, you should read it. It is. Oh, I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, it it is, I think it's one. I mean, obviously she has more iconic stories, but mm-hmm. that for me is, is probably one of the most, one of the most unsettling. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's just, um, she just has a real, she just had a, a real gift for that. And I think it's interesting that like, you know, when you think of Strangers on a Train, or you think of the talent of Mr. Ripley, you tend to think about the films, like the mm-hmm. iconic films. But it, you know, the novels themselves are just, you know, just brilliant. There's so yeah, there's just so much more going on beneath the skin of the characters, even though the films are wonderful. Yes. Um, there's so much that you're especially, I mean, it's just pure psychological suspense. And it is, you know, which both of us write. And it's yeah. it there's just something. A, that you can do in a book of psychological suspense that no matter how great a filmmaker you are you know, yeah, because you can't you necessarily lose the internal life of the character in, exactly in the exactly so it has to be broadcast but in psychological suspense you know most of the layers are, are hidden mm-hmm. so the important layers are hidden I should say <laughs> yeah it's absolutely true yeah you know? Yeah. But it's like, yeah, that whole just sort of obsessive quality, which, which again, in your short story is kind of there too, <laughs> but it's like that. Yeah, that kind of like, and, and that's, um, so Strangers on a Train is a little bit, um, was it partially the inspiration for Confessions on the 745. It's oh, not cool. a retelling of that story at all, but it's just like that, you know, I've, I'm, as a writer, I'm always really interested in that moment, you know, that mm-hmm. sort of, you know, the liminal space space mm-hmm. between other places you know like and when you're traveling how you're like not the person you were when you left the place where you were and you're not the person you're going to be when you get where you're going and there's like a tremendous energy in that space and like you know we all know like in those moments you meet somebody yes and all of a sudden you know there's you know there are layers that are you know there are selves pieces of yourself that you're not attending to you're in a different kind of universe of thought and feeling and that you know like sometimes you connect with somebody and something really tremendous happens and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not so good yes and, and 
Right. Yes, exactly. And there's, yeah. and there's always like this little kind of fork in the road and you can go one way or go the other way. And, exactly. So that know, was kind of like, that was the sort of one of the, one of the sort of places that were, was an inspiration for um, Confessions on the 745. And um, that's fabulous. I'm just reading again, or just kind of touching base again with, did you read Patricia Highsmith's book on plotting and writing? It's, I think that's what it's called, plotting and writing suspense fiction. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's so interesting to hear here. It's really, it's really about her. Yeah. And her writing life, which is, you know, obviously all the best writing books like on writing or um, bird by bird. Bird by bird. Yeah. Like, they're always about, you know, it's about that writing life. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I always find that her book to be very, um, very inspirational. Yeah. And I, I like those type of, I mean, I, I, rather than just like a how to book, right. It's, how I do, how right. I, how do, I do it. Right? Yeah. I, I find only those a few people that you really want to know how they, <laughs> yeah. Like just get inside the, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, um, so most of, uh, so all writers are readers first, right. And all readers are just kind of in love with story, I think across, you know, across all format. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of us are just kind of you know, if we're not fully locked down, we're at least closer to home these days than we were before and probably doing a lot more watching of film and, and television. Yeah. So is there anything that you're watching right now that um, is really just kind of transported you or is there something that you go back to over and over again? Well, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, during the pandemic, again, we became addicted to Ozark, which we hadn't. Yeah. We had not, never seen it before. It's and good. again, just great characters. Yeah. I mean, we're still, you know, what do we watch? We watch like two seasons of it. So we're still in the binging yeah. phase. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, so that's one watch that we were, you know, just, and I just love things that are just sort of propulsive worth somebody does one bad thing and it leads to another but also in in Ozark it's like you're you find out all these things about the characters as the series yeah. goes on and they're nobody's who you thought they were at the beginning exactly. and you're, you're yeah the, la the layers are just epic I mean they just really have done a tremendous job and like the mayor you know their marriage yes oh my god marriage, and you know all the all their all their individual flaws and they're like flaws as a couple Oh, and it's amazing. Kids. It is. It's really amazing. I, I loved Breaking Bad and it gives me the same kind of feel, you know, as yeah. Breaking Bad did. That's yeah. probably like my favorite series ever. That yeah. Six Feet Under and this. Um, but I'm, oh, this, is, this is, what a great show that was. I haven't thought about that in ages. It's funny, we watched that with our daughter again. Like I watched it, of course I was addicted when it first came out yeah. and then we watched it, my husband and I watched it again. And then you know, when my daughter was old enough to appreciate it, we watched it with her and yeah. you know, now she's in film school. And um, I think yeah. her first year in film school, they had an acting for film class and, you know, they gave them scenes um, to act without saying what they were from. And she was the only one in her whole class who I was able to identify it as a scene from Six Feet Under. Um, that was a brilliant show. Oh God, it's just so great. And it's a weird thing because I, um, you know, I watched the show and I loved it and I didn't realize how much it had influenced my writing until mm. I like would look over some of my books and I'm like, hmm, boy, that really, I think I was inspired by <laughs> <laughs> different characters that I saw and say, not that I was ripping off. No, no, of course not. <laughs> but it, well, it, I think we're all inspired by other stories and characters. And then, you know, that moment of inspiration leads you to create a whole new story and a whole new character and I, I don't think we can help but be inspired by each other you know students of each other you know certainly you know people that we have you know admired before we were writing or you know now our contemporaries like you talk about Mary Higgins Clark unfortunately Mary you know M Mary left us very recently yeah. um but you know we you know sort of view her as you know, a trailblazer. I mean, no, I don't think it, I don't think any of us that are writing, you know, suspense fiction, crime fiction today don't owe her like a debt of gratitude. Absolutely. I mean, and, anybody writing psychological suspense right. is, is 
owes a debt of gratitude to Mary Higgins Clark. She absolutely, was, absolutely. She, she and, had that book out there that she had those books in the 70s. That yes, exactly. Oh, so we were like kids yeah. and I was reading the books when I was a kid and my mom reading the books and like, you know, and I think that that's, you know, I think that that's a joyful thing that, you know, that you draw inspiration from stories that you love and from characters that you love and from mm -hmm. other, your contemporary writers and writers that came before you. And then, you know, once you have that seat of inspiration, then it becomes your own, all your own thing. And it Absolutely. You know, it hopefully takes it to a different level, to a different place. I wouldn't, you know, definitely, I, I, I don't think there's any writer that doesn't, you know, doesn't know that feeling of just being grateful for a story that inspired them. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what What is your favorite thing been to kind of binge watch during? Because I'm looking for things. I oh, I've also been watching The Vow on HBO. Um, oh, yeah. The Vow. I haven't. The Vow. It's about the Nexium cult. It's a it's a documentary series. Oh, I need to watch that immediately. I didn't know that was. Yes. <laughs> The thing is, it'll make you want to write about cults, and I don't oh. really want to write about a cult because there's, the, there's, been, I, there's too, too many cult many books out there. Cults. But then you watch this, and you're like, "Oh, I could write a cult book." I want to write a I really write fresh a book about cults. <laughs> yes, like, stop making me write a cult book. I don't want to. But it's really good. I'm going to stop you. No <laughs> cult books for either one of us. Of course, next. Yes. Okay. Let's make a vow. <laughs> we're making a vow that we're not going to yeah. write about cults. No cult books. No more. <laughs> Um, well, we just are binging the uh, the Queen's Gambit right now. Oh, I heard that was so good. I have not really good. At first, I kind of was like a little bit, you know, not that into it. I don't know if it's just because, I don't know, like even with everything that's going on, you know, my book came just came out and I am like busier than I've ever been, but it's just in my house. I'm just like running up and down the stairs in my own house all day, like super busy, like on Zoom and doing <laughs> Right, I know it's the craziest thing boring in your house and then it's just the end of the day I just collapse like into a pile of myself I'm just like so exhausted and then um but we so at first when we started I was like I don't know if I'm that into it and now we are like so into it it's it's really good I I'm you know the only thing I know about it is it's got it looks from the from the stills I've seen it has beautiful styling and it's yeah. about chess which I know nothing about at all, but everybody I know. Yeah, so. it is. It's about a, it's about a prodigious chess player mm -hmm. who's, a, you know, a young woman and she's, a, she's an orphan. She's been orphaned. So she grows up in this orphanage and there's a man there, the janitor who teaches her how to play chess. Oh, okay. And she, um, it, and it's got, a, it's got a lot of other layers too. She's eventually adopted by um by a couple and um you know and she's part of this kind of group of orphans at the beginning of the of the um of the show they're basically being medicated at this orphanage they're basically be given you've been given you've been given two vitamins a day mm -hmm. and one is supposed to i guess pep you up and the other one's supposed to calm you down i don't know and she winds wow. up you know kind of addicted and then the laws, I don't know if it's based on a true story or not, but within the, within the um, context of the story, the laws change and the kids get their drugs taken away from them. Like they're no longer allowed to tranquilize their orphans. And so it, um, it becomes like, um, you know, she becomes like, she goes through withdrawal, she goes through withdrawal and um, then she kind of settles back in, you know, she settles back in, she gets adopted and her, her, this, her mother, the woman who adopts her, helps her start joining chess tournaments. Mm -hmm. oh. And, you know, and it's really just kind of a, I mean, we're only just a few episodes in, but it's just super fast. The character, um, the, char the main character herself is super fascinating and the world of sort of this totally male dominated world of chess. Mm -hmm. And then how this, you know, kind of, you know, this 15 year old girl just comes in and turns everything just kind of upside down for the whole chess world. And it's, again, very layered characters, characters are just very slowly revealed all their different, all their different aspects. And it's, uh, it's excellent. It's really well done. How interesting that, you know, that the, the creators of this were able to, and the, based on a book too, and isn't it, but that, is it or I don't know, I don't know but that they're I'll able look it up I'll write it in the comments yeah, that, yeah. That, that they're able to find a world 
that's so esoteric, but that is so universal to people because yes. of the emotions yes. that they're expressing. Yeah. Which is, which is interesting. You know, um, we're both, we're both friendly with Megan Abbott and I think she does that with her books a lot. Like yes, very much I know so. she, she'll take you into cheerleading or a science lab or, or, um, you know, gymnastics and yeah, I don't know anything about any of those places, but right. the emotions between the characters are so real that yeah. it kind of, it's sort of like, you, it becomes like your tour guide into this, these worlds. And so that's what it sounds like with, with chess and with this world of chess, like, it's exactly I, that's not like something that. I would be necessarily interested in, but the emotions involved are, yeah. would make me, you know, so. Yeah. And it's really, it's really well done. And it's very just sort of, there's something kind of, I guess the word I'm looking for is just sort of joyful about it. Like it's not, mm -hmm. it, there, there's some sort of darkness to it, but it really is, takes a back seat to just this very high energy vibration that it has. It's not, it's not a, you know, we, we watch so much dark. I don't maybe, yeah. maybe probably you do too watch and read so much like really, really dark stuff. And you're always like kind of waiting for. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. That's, I mean, something joyful sounds wonderful. Right yeah. Now. I mean, not to say that it's all popular. like light and happy or anything, but there, there's definitely is just something about it. That's, that is uh, like lighter. It's not yeah. really kind of, you know, I don't think anybody's going to get, you know, brutally murdered at any point. <laughs> exactly. Like I mean, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not ruling it out, but it just doesn't seem like it. <laughs> not going that way i don't think so <laughs> i'll let you know if it does <laughs> yeah remember that joyful thing i told you about allison well sorry so now well, by the time this by the time we air this it'll probably have taken a super dark turn i'll have to write <laughs> right in the comments like damn exactly lisa what are you doing to me <laughs> oh my God. um and the other thing i'm super excited about is that the fourth season of the crown starts this weekend oh yes you know i am not i need to start yeah. watching the crown you because i love it you i are my closest friends are addicted to the crown and i watch and re-watch and re-watch it like i just yeah. turn it on because it's, it's <laughs> It's great escapism, it isn't it? I mean, it soothes me in some yeah. really weird way. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just incredibly soothing. It's so beautifully shot. It's the writing is extraordinary. The acting, especially in the early seasons with Claire Foy as oh, yeah. Queen Elizabeth. I mean, it's she's truly mesmerizing as a performer and um every and the the dialogue and you know sort of the portrayal of winston churchill by i think it's john lithgow oh wow what an actor too. um it is there it is actually I, and i don't say this lightly it's perfect it is oh. literally perfect in every way and you always think that it can't get it can't get better and every season it gets better especially when they kind of aged her up and that Claire Foy was no longer Queen Elizabeth. Um, and you just thought, I don't know. I don't know how can you can how can you reconnect to the character when you sort of attach to this one actress? And it was just, you know, it was every bit as good if not, if not if not better. Was that Olivia Coleman playing her as, as an older uh, is it is that Olivia Coleman? Did you say Olivia? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to watch the show. And then this coming, the upcoming season, isn't that about Princess Diana? Like I know about the show, but I just need to watch it. You know? No. Yeah, it is. Um, it is about Princess Diana. And that's something that, you know, because I, I was actually living in the UK during that time. Um, my parent, my parents traveled all over the world when, when we were, when, when I was a kid and, uh, we were in the UK at that time when, or just back, maybe just oh. back in the UK when, when Princess Diana and Prince Charles got married. Wow. And it was like, you know, like, so for me, it's kind of, you know, brings back a lot of, you know, memories of my, of my childhood and stuff. Just I remember like, Princess Diana and that dress, that thing. And that ring, the ring. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that everything sapphire. about it and, 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 and her shyness at the beginning and, and, you know, and then how she just kind of blossomed and, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a great show. You would love it, Allison. You should definitely. 
He's, I think I need to watch it. I think I'm definitely sold. It's, it's a awesome. full binge. It's a full binge. And then I thought it was so interesting in the second season, the New York Times did um, this really interesting feature where they talked about or they kind of went through the episodes mm -hmm. in the second season and went back and sort of pulled all the various articles of how you know the the news stories were covered at that time in the time. Oh wow! Yeah, so that was kind of it's an interesting article. Like it's a, just like an interesting appendix if you're if you really get into the show the way I clearly. I love I love supplemental materials to everything. <laughs> like I'm I'm a huge recap reader. I'm like every yeah. time. <laughs> I'm into a show. I read like every review that's been written about it, every like article about it, because we just want to want more. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, exactly. give me more. Like, yeah, I was a big like Game of Thrones like episode recap reader. Yeah. See, and I've never seen Game of Thrones, and my husband is watching it now. He's like oh, catching should, up on you, it. You, you would like. I think you would like it. I mean, it's, I was, it's, I was afraid to watch it be, at the beginning because I've, I've never been like a Hobbit person or oh no a, it's not I mean it's, it's not I know I just and then it became like okay this seems like a show I could really like but then it's like okay now you have to watch seven seasons of yeah, it seven, up, it's you know? kind of nice because then you kind of have that you know yeah. I don't know if you ever watch like I sometimes watch things when I'm on the treadmill or whatever you know, I need to, like, you know, I usually, when I'm exercising, um, I was listening to music and now yeah. I've gotten into this thing where I'm, I do nothing. It's, I just listen to, I run. My husband, you know? my husband does that. He like tries to meditate when he's on the treadmill. I'm like, yeah, because that's the only way I can think of ideas and I need yeah. to think of another book idea really badly. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If my editor, we got it. It's right. cults, right? Wasn't it cults? Isn't it yes, cults. That's it. It's going to be about cults. <laughs> Anything but ABC, anything but cults. Anything, anything but cults. <laughs> At least it narrows it down. <laughs> yes. Okay, so my book's going to be about not cults. It's not, it's not but, cults. Was, but it really, it helps me for some reason, like when I'm exercising to, I just. Oh yeah, I, for sure. Yeah, my, my music wasn't working or my headphones weren't working one day. And yeah. then, and then I was like, hey, this is, you know, I'm actually able to think, you know, yes. it's like I, I was used to turning off my mind and now I sort of turn it on. So I, so I don't, so I don't watch something yep. when I'm, when I'm running, but I, yep. yeah, but I do, I, I do love to just unwind with a good show that I can get lost in. And, yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think that, and if it's a really good show, like it can also be inspirational, you know, like, or if it gives you a vibe or a mood. You know, it doesn't necessarily need to be like even like sometimes if your story's not nothing like what you're watching but like there's something about the mood or yeah. the music even um that kind of takes you to the next you know space in your book or whatever like i find that happens sometimes oh absolutely absolutely yeah. it's interesting like um i don't know if my my mom's been staying with us and um i think on halloween we were watching pbs and they showed in cold blood which i've seen oh, yeah. time. God. but i was just thinking about it i mean there's the one moment when um i think uh, robert blake or you know, perry smith turns to dick and and yeah. and he says you, you know we can turn back now you know and i to me like that there's a whole book right in that we can turn right. back now, we can turn back know? now i think there that is a moment of like right before you make that wrong turn you know and what yeah. like that i find i found that just that moment inspirational yeah, yeah that is, that is an, an inspirational moment and i think that you know stuff like that you know plays into your books a lot and, and also into mine it's like just that that I, the idea of choice Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that you may you you what leads us to make a specific choice like what is the driver what is the driver beneath what we think is the driver right mm -hmm. like what is the thing that you think you want x but what it is that you want is so much deeper than that and yeah. like you're acting from that you're acting from that nether space yeah. And it, that's actually what's driving you. Like, I think that that's some, that's a space that really, um, I find I come to again and again in my fiction It's just like, why did this person make this choice? Yes. It's not so much who done it as why done it. You right. know? And, then, and right. then that's what you get to eventually. And, right. exactly. and they, they kind of discover it along with you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, when you're writing, do you ever just 
like, do you, are you just sort of surprised, do you surprise yourself? Like, um, Oh yeah. I mean, I don't have any, like I, I write without an outline. Mm -hmm. Um, I, when I sit down to write, I don't know what's going to happen day to day. I don't know who's going to show up. I usually don't know what my book is about. I definitely don't know how it's going to (laughs) end. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Or I have like an idea of how it's going to end. And then I'm like, nah, you know, (laughs) Yeah, I've just got this kind of, you know, I just kind of follow my character voice for me everything begins and ends with character voice Mm -hmm. so you know like I might have like you know like I was saying about confessions like it was you know the seed might be one thing it might be like just this kind of idea this sort of nebulous like strangers on a train kind of vibe Mm -hmm. Um, but you know or in in this case specifically it was like about something about con con men con artists and Mm -hmm. and the con and it sort of lead me to like a lot of research. And then I feel like if that connects with something else that's going on with me, then I'm going to start to hear a character or a character voice mm-hmm. and, or voices. And then that's what I'm going to follow through the narrative. And so I'm always surprised. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of exciting when that happens. Yeah. Well, that's the whole magic of it. I mean, I write for the same reason that I read because mm-hmm. I want to yeah. know what's going to happen. Yes, yeah, because you want to find out how it ends. You want exactly. to see the story. <laughs> You want to, want to find out what's happening, you know? Um, so, and then, so just to kind of have an awkward segue into our final three good things, I, I don't follow an outline when I write, but I do sometimes follow a recipe. Ah, yes. (laughs) (laughs) When I cook, um, what about you? Do you have something like during this pandemic that's just been like your go-to or do you have a comfort thing that everybody wants you to make when they've had a bad day or? Well, yes, this is kind of interesting. So I actually have this cookbook here with me. Oh. Um, it's my mom and uh, oh. another lady. It's, you can't read it, but it says from Vassar to Kitchen. And it's like my mom and a classmate of hers put together this cookbook. Oh my God. I- before I was born, I think, or maybe around like in the 60s or whatever, you know. I have goosebumps right now. That is so cool. Yeah, like when I was a baby. So it was like a fundraising thing, you know, and so so there's this one recipe in here that my grandma always used to make, and it's just such comfort food. It's so not good for you, Um, but (laughs) it's called, it's, and I don't even know why it's called what it is, but it's called Spaghetti West Texas, but there's nothing really Southwestern about this recipe at all. (laughs) not. So all you do is you take, you saute um, onions and peppers and some meat, or you could do veggie meat if you're not, you know, or turkey or whatever. Right. My grandma made it with ground beef you, and you saute it together. And then, and you know, it's in this, it's in the From Bastard Kitchen book. And then you, um, you know, you cook up some spaghetti. And, um, and then when the meat and the peppers and the spaghetti are ready, you mix them all together. Uh You put two cans of creamed corn in it. You can tell when this was written and two cans of uh, Campbell's tomato soup. Oh my God. Like a, just a boatload of Parmesan cheese. So much. Oh my God. You mix it up. You, you put it in a casserole dish, put it in the oven uncovered for an hour. And it comes out this just addictive, incredibly unhealthy, amazing casserole. And the top gets all crunchy because of the Parmesan cheese. Oh Yeah. Yeah, you, then you sprinkle it on top too, and, and, and as well as having it all mixed in, it's wow. re- it's really really good. It's really old fashioned, and it's like perfect for when the weather gets cold. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds yeah, so great. It's, it's, yeah, it's that's my like favorite little a, like a mom comfort food meal. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's just so like you know, okay, any any kid will eat this and that's love right. It. Yeah, that's that's but I don't know why it's called Spaghetti West Texas. There's not a chili pepper in sight. There's no, there's nothing <laughs> South the corn. Maybe it's, the, they thought the corn was like. Corn, and it's creamed corn. So I'm still <laughs> like, and this is like my little old Jewish grandmother from New Haven made it. So I don't think she like, you know, yeah. very much about the, about West Texas at all. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. It's so, and it's funny because we actually make something that's a little, that's kind of similar, but it's like a little bit of like a, it's a little bit like, um, like more, um, like maybe a little healthier. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we do uh, ground tur. We saute like ground turkey and garlic and olive oil and all of that, mm-hmm. and then we put in um, uh, like we might use like a lentil, like lentil pasta. You know, mm-hmm. like that red lentil pasta that they make, which is really really good. So we put it in dry. Oh, in the, in the meat. Then we put our either my sauce that you know I make my grandmother's recipe. We usually have a bunch of frozen sauce in in the in the refrigerator. So I put that in. You mix it all together, let it simmer on the stove for a little while, and then I cover cover it with. I I have a dairy allergy, unfortunately, so we use dairy free cheese, which you know mm-hmm. to me it's, tastes like cheese because I haven't had cheese in like 10 years. For everybody else, it probably doesn't taste like cheese, but whatever. And but I, no, I like um, vegan cheese a lot. So, yeah, it's yeah, good, I, right? Yeah. So we put the diet cheese on top after it's been simmering mm-hmm. for a while, and then you just put it in the oven. And when it comes out, it's, you know, it's almost like a big, it's almost like a baked ziti, but it's just like this yes, one pot. That sounds like, wonderful. It sounds very close, yeah, actually. It's you very know? close, but right? healthier. It's very yeah, <laughs> it is. It's really close. I forgot there's garlic in this too, but like a lot. Of yeah, lots garlic. of garlic, lots of garlic. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we, yeah, so we kind of, um, we, that's kind of one of our like go-to meals, mm-hmm. you know, like that's like the weeknight go-to meal. Like when you like, okay, what do we have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do some, exactly. Just throw everything together, yeah. shove it in the oven, and yeah. uh, and then and it's like and it's great when you're making a casserole like that because the whole house kind of fills with the smell. It does. Exactly, and you just feel it. There's like something very comforting about that. Yeah, very. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. Allison, thank you so much for hanging out with me. This has been like such a treat. I feel like, you know, thank you, Lisa. We're, only missing, we're only missing our margaritas. Yes, we need margaritas. We need to <laughs> do. We, we must do this again <laughs> with margaritas. Yeah. So your most recent book, I have it right here is, uh, came out in, was it, July, was it last year, 2019? Yes. It, yes, it's it's called Never Look Back. Never look and then back. My, and my next book is coming out in I think the end of May, beginning of June, twenty twenty one, and it's called The Collective. And the collective. Uh, yeah, and interestingly, like is it, about, is, is it about a cult? <laughs> no, it's not about a, well. It's kind of cult like in a way. <laughs> Sounds like it's about a cult. Oh no! Um, <laughs> Darn it. it! It's a yeah, It's about it. It's about a. It is about a secret uh, organization of um, mothers whose whose uh, children were uh, killed by people who never got punished. And okay. they're acting together, um, doing little teeny parts of, of bringing these people to justice. And, but are they good or are they bad? And Ooh. this one woman um, gets involved with, is recruited and gets involved with them uh, who is the mother of a teenage girl that's um, killed uh, by a boy accidentally rape type college rape situation type thing and she's it's destroyed her yeah and she discovers this group and oh it sounds great am I so gonna it's... am I gonna get a galley am I yes gonna... of course yes you are definitely getting a galley um <laughs> absolutely and I hope you like it I it's know I will little, I know little I strangers will. on a train energy in, in a way um, yeah okay in a way just yeah. people kind of doing things for each other yeah that that sounds that sounds right up my alley <laughs> oh good <laughs> I can't wait to read it um I have the I here I have this on here oh there you are Yes. And that's your most recent one. Never look back. I had it. That's why I was looking down before because I had it pulled up. But of course, it closed while I was. Of course, it closed while I was talking to you. Technology. You got to love it. I'm doing my best here, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I think you're doing great. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) It's been so great talking to you. Um, Everybody, you know, if you have not read Allison, which I'm sure you have, but if you have not, this is the time. This is the moment. Um, she has a wonderful website and it's just alisongalen.com and I'll put it in the comments. You should definitely check out her work. It, she's super talented and obviously incredibly charming and fun to hang out with. Um, oh. So Allison, thank you so much for, um, for hanging out with me and having this fun chat. Thank you, Lisa. This was a real treat. I'm going to go make some casserole now. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Bye, Allison. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.